today's video, we're going to go over how you can turn the Python application from the previous video into a web application. And then after that, we're going to go a little bit over the code that you're going to use in order to try this out. Now, what's going to be more important about this tutorial isn't going to be so much the code that we wrote out for this. I think what's going to be more important is that you understand the concepts of what's going on behind the scenes, because as you start making other projects that, you know, for your own custom applications that you want to have your own use cases for, even if you are using tools like ChatGPT and Claude, it's going to be better for you if you understand the principles that are going on. So let's go ahead and get started and talk a little bit about that. So if you recall in the previous video, we created a Python application that used the Gmail API in order to retrieve emails and create drafts. And the way we were running that application, once we finished writing out our file, was just using the command python main.py. Of course, this would trigger the Python application or the Python code, which was already integrated with the Gmail API code that we needed from the simple Gmail library. Once we set up the authentication for that, we're able to retrieve information directly from the Gmail servers for that specific email account that we're working with. And the main parts of that being that you need to run the Python command to run your Python code to go ahead and retrieve the emails. This is very limiting because at the end of the day, we want to use this API knowledge that we're gathering in order to combine not just the Gmail API, but we want to be able to tie in multiple applications together through integrations. And that's including our crew AI project that we're working towards integrating within this project. So the solution for that is going to be to turn your Python application, which right now only runs locally into a web application. But now you can see here that our Python application is then going to be turned into a web application using the fast API library. And this web application that we create using fast API, we're then going to host it using the Uvicorn library. So now instead of your Python application only existing within your computer using the fast API library, we turn this Python application into a web application and then we use the Ubicorn library to host it. And the reason why we want our application hosted on a web server is because we want the ability to both send and receive data through HTTPS requests. As we mentioned in earlier videos, anytime you go to a website, you're not really going to a website, you're making a request to a specific server based on the address that you write down. I'm sure you already know this, but anytime you write facebook.com, instagram.com, whatever the website name is, that's a reference to the actual address of that application. And being able to build your application in such a way that it's able to both receive and send requests is what's gonna allow it to be integrated with other applications. And this is what will allow it to both send and receive requests via webhooks. So to put it in simple terms, instead of running your application by writing the python main.py command, instead you'll be able to type in the web address of the server where your application is being hosted. And depending on the endpoint you hit, that's just going to be these forward slash details that we have on here. That's going to be the logic in the code that's going to be carried out. So for example, since for this tutorial, we're only going to be deploying our application locally, the address of that server is just going to be localhost 8000. So whenever we go to HTTPS localhost 8000 slash home, it's going to trigger the logic in the Python code, which really only tells us that the application is up and running. If we go to localhost 8000 slash email, it's going to go ahead and carry out the logic that reads the unread emails in the inbox. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the code so you can become familiar with how this is going to be formatted in your project. So the first thing that happens when you run this app is it deploys it as a UVCorn server. As you can see from the main function here, we can see the specifics for our localhost server. Now setting up your project as a web application is going to be as simple as this line right here where it says app equals fast API. Once you do this, you're going to be able to write out the logic for your endpoints. As you can see here in line 73, we have app.get forward slash that's just the home page. Here we have app.get forward slash emails. And last in line before we have app.post process email. Now I know a lot of this stuff may be fairly new to you, but let's look at the patterns that we see here. For each app.bc get that's related to a get request. We see get again here too. And then last we see post. And these are the same concepts we were talking about in previous videos where for web requests, you only have get, post, update, and delete. So what's really going on in these lines of code is that for this endpoint, which is just a forward slash, but you could call it whatever you want, when the specific endpoint is hit, you're going to perform the logic that's defined right below it. In other words, when we go to localhost 8000 slash home, it should print out the welcome to email processing API. And line 77 for the forward slash emails endpoint, we're going to want to perform this method right here, the get emails, and then the logic that's right under it. And here we can see that it's pointing to the receive recent emails function. And if we click into it, this is the function where we use the Gmail API to pull the emails from the inbox. So now you begin to see the pattern that we were talking about earlier. Whenever you make a web request for that specific server, you're going to hit or you're going to specify the specific endpoint. And that's what's going to route the application 
to perform the code that it's pointing at. For our example, we've set up three simple endpoints. One just to check that the server is running, which is forward slash home. Another one to check the unread emails and another one to process the emails. So now let's go ahead and run our code so you can see this in action. So after you pull the code from GitHub, you're going to want to do a couple of pip installations. It's going to be pip install fast API, pip install Pydantic. And if you haven't done so already, you want to do pip install simple Gmail. And because we're using the Gmail API, you're going to need your client secret authentication keys. And if you haven't gotten those yet, I would recommend you go back to the previous video starting from the beginning so you can see step by step how you can acquire those. After you do those installations, we do want to launch our application by running our server and the command is going to be Uricorn main app dash dash host and you can copy the rest on here or just take a screenshot so you can type it out and then just press enter as you can see here the application is running so let's go ahead and try some of these endpoints so let's go ahead and follow the link for our web server right here just going to click follow link and here we see a message welcome to the email processing api same as it was defined here welcome to the email processing api i know i had set I know I had set it to forward slash home, but this is the root directory. So this just stays as forward slash, which is really just the original URL that you went to. So let's go ahead and try the forward slash emails URL. So just like that, forward slash emails, enter. Here we see that it's loading. And here we see that we're able to receive two emails that were unread, which I just sent like a couple minutes ago. Again, from, from this, the user account that I sent them from. And in here, it's not formatted properly, but these were the contents that were in the email. But as you can see here, we have app.get, this is just a get request forward slash emails. It then processes the get emails function. And this is the logic that we wrote in our Python app in the previous code in order to retrieve the emails through the Gmail API. And here we also have the logic for how to handle this request in case that there are no emails that are found in the inbox. So because we already read these and they shouldn't be marked as unread anymore, let's go ahead and try it again. And now we get the message, emails not found as it was dictated over here. So now let's click process email. So when we try this one out, we get this message here that says method not allowed. And you might be wondering why that is. I mean, the spelling is incorrect. We clearly have our endpoint defined here, forward slash process email. And we have some logic in here that's written out. And if we look at the logs in our application, we see this message here, 405 method not allowed. So that's the error code that we get for this request and the reason for that is because if you look closely at here where we're defining our endpoint this is defined as a post request this is a request to send data to the server we're on a browser right now browsers are only there really to retrieve information from servers not to submit information to them directly via a url like we're trying to do later on as we start building on our project and using webhooks in order to transmit information we're going to talk a little more about how our application uses post requests via these endpoints or webhooks in order to send information to a different process, to a different service, or to a different API. And just like that, congratulations, you've turned your Python application from a simple Python app that only runs locally to a web application that can now be hosted on a server. I know we covered a good amount of concepts within this video, so if there's something I wasn't clear to you, please be sure to comment it. You can always message me on Discord. And also, of course, I do recommend you do a little bit of research either with ChatGPT, Claude, whatever you want, because I know these principles are gonna help you a lot when it comes to integrations, when it comes to deploying your own applications, when it comes to building out your own projects, these principles, AI or no AI, are always gonna stay, they're gonna be relevant. And the more you have in your technical knowledge arsenal, the more things you're gonna be able to make and the more valuable skills you're gonna have in the age of AI. If you have some more questions on developing your AI project, or maybe you just want a little bit of advice on how you can continue to further your education both in the field of software development and AI. I'm gonna leave a link in the description where you can book a one-on-one -on -one video call with me. And yes, that's completely free, no charge. And I'll be more than happy to meet you, talk to you, and provide whatever guidance that I can. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.